Hello and welcome back to The Colony with Man of the Ants, back in the utterly beautiful world of Microsoft Flight Simulator today. We're going to be doing another look at some viewer requests. So we have requests for to look at places all over the world, literally the other side of the world. One of them is for New Zealand. But today, my, my initial plan was to go through them as I received the request and just do them in order. But it's worked out there have been a few which we can group together in a bit more of a reasonable manner. So apologies if I skip your request, but I will get to... Anything that anyone requests, I, I will get to, I promise you. It's just that you might not be in the order that they were requested in. So we're going to be sticking around Devon today because there's been a few more requests for stuff around Devon. So someone asked for a proper look at Exeter because we did just skim over it and that was it. So we'll have a bit more of a, a proper look at Exeter. You can see there's lots of people playing today, look. Look at that. Loads of people around. And the fact that guy looks like he's going to the um, little Grassfield Airport, the South Hounds one. There's even a couple of people around Plymouth, look. And there's that one, uh, that was oh, a couple of people at Exeter as well. Might see them when we load in. So yes, Exeter was one of the things someone requested to see. Apologies, I don't have the names either because I've started to list them but haven't recorded people's names who requested them. But Exeter was one of them. Uh, Tinmouth was one of them. Tinmouth is, where, where are we? Tinmouth is about here-ish? Somewhere around here. It's, it's just up from the, if we went here, this is Tor Bay. This was Paint and Torquay, if you recall. And Tinmouth is up here, I believe, next to, um, Next to Dawlish. I'm just checking the map now <laughs> just to make sure, yeah. So Exmouth there, Dawlish is about here, and then Tinmouth is about here -ish. So we'll, we'll go down this little part of the coast, which is absolutely beautiful. So we'll have a look at that. And then uh, we're going to pop back to Plymouth as well because somebody asked to see some of the other areas of Plymouth, including Plymstock and Plimpton, which are kind of like the suburbs. And I thought we'll probably take a look and see what Sherford looks like. Sherford is a new build area in Plymouth. They've basically built a, an entire town on the edge of Plymouth and they're just going to tack it on. Um, but I don't know what state it would have been in when they took the satellite imagery for, for Bing because it's, it's currently still being built. And it's also got a very distinctive brick building so whether they've picked up on that design element at all will be quite interesting to see and then going forth we're going to go over a few other places in the uk uh, and or like i say new zealand as well and, and somewhere in ireland people's request someone's requested as well but for now we're going to go to exeter i am going to do a take off from oh why did that just disappear start that again shall we from exeter so that's just departure uh, we are going to go from the gate just because I like going from the gate. I think it's fun. We might do the automatic startup though, just to make it a little bit easier. Flight conditions, we're going to leave on live weather and on live weather and, and time. It's currently lunchtime here. It's 20 past 12 and we'll leave everything else as it is. I have chosen da, 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 the flight design. You get the better picture? There we go. The flight design at CTSL. It's got some quite nice large windows. It's got I don't know what the term is, but high wings. They won't be impeding our view underneath us. We might get a bit of a better view as well. So let's load in. And I'm not going to set a destination. No, because we're going to load in. We're going to go down here. And then we will go. We'll do, I'll do a separate load for Plymouth rather than flying across Dartmoor again, just to save a bit of time, I think. Cool. So we're just going to hit fly. So here we are at Exeter. And there is our beautifully cute little plane. Look at it, look. Isn't that delightful? I've managed to set up my uh, tail insignia, number, whatever, call sign. Is that what we're going for? Yeah, something like that. So it now says MOTA for Man of the Ants at the back, which is lovely. So let's get ready to fly. Let's have a little look around our plane. Oh, it's got a window at the top. So tell us about pushback, which you don't actually want to do necessarily, but it's just going to leave that there until we do request pushback. Okay. Electric system, of course, it must be turned off. So we're just going to hit the... Are we going to hit the auto power on? It is a new plane. Actually, no. Let's go through the checklist, shall we? Um, this is all going to be fine. I'm not going to bother with the pre-engine one. Oh, it doesn't actually have a, a startup procedure. I'll start a procedure. That was it. Okay. Let's do the evaluation. Fuel shut off valve. And where are we looking for the fuel shut off? That looks like it's off. Oh, well, it should be open. It should be open. Cool. The choke should be on. on. The throttle should be open or not very much open. open no more than five millimeters. 
Okay, just a tiny little bit of throttle. Turn on the master switches. Now, are these going to work if I use my... Oh, it is. And did I do the generator? No, I think that's on the same button, so I don't know where that is. So we'll just hit the generator one. Boop. Uh, the brake should be on. There we go. And then ignition start. I had an ignition button, didn't I? Which was that. Which does nothing. Perfect. <laughs> and start. start. And then monitor the oil temperature, which is just here, to make sure it gets up to 50 degrees. So that's 40. That's 50. We should be good to go. Oil temperature. Oh no, and then additional equipment. additional equipment. So we want the avionics, we want all of the lights as well. Wonderful. Was there something else? Ah, yes. Whatever this is. Is that where it's supposed to go? Do you want to do it again? Don't know. We're just gonna say auto complete item. <laughs> Switched on. Perfect. So one of the things I have figured out as well, I'll just very quickly mention this. If we bring up any of the uh, the on screen things, so you can hit this button here. What this button here does is it. Well, you you won't be able to see it unfortunately because it's only I'm only recording the actual um, flight simulator window. If I hit that button, it takes that element, that GUI element and it converts it into a separate process window so you can move it to other screens. So I now have that map on my second screen and I can resize it and do everything I want and turn the ISO lines on and turn the GPS tracking on. That's wonderful. I've never seen that anything like that before. Maybe it's something that, that flight sims do quite a lot, but I had no idea that was a thing. How cool is that? There's also apparently anything you can do, I think if you hold right alt. No, right control. So, so if you click on the screens, you can get the screens to pop out, but I'm not too fussed about that. Just click. It pops out the aircraft screens again into a separate process window. So you can move it around, and I'm assuming you could, uh, yeah, you can press all the buttons in it and everything. And as you can see, that's flickering down there because it's actually detecting the input. How cool is that? But anyway. We're probably not going to bother with the taxi in and all that stuff and requesting the pushback. We're just going to release our brake, which was this one. That's pretty sure that's I pretty just told my gear to uh, extend, which I'd rather not do. I think I need to increase the dead zone on my uh, rudder a little bit. Anyway, I'm going the wrong way because it is going to be behind me. Look at the cars driving past. How cool is that? And also just the cars in that airport area there as well. Uh, so we're just going to get rid of... In fact, no, I'm going to pop the objective one out so it's just not in our way. I'm guessing that's an, an another player over there, is it? It's very hard for me to tell. I'm guessing that's another player. Which is very cool. He's requesting or waiting on taxiway clearance, apparently. So I'm probably going to annoy him by jumping the queue and just going and doing whatever I want, right? Stay on the taxiway. Stay on the taxiway. There we go. How fast do we go? Not very fast. Probably give it a little bit more welly, couldn't we? So the bus going around the taxi. Was that like the one that, the one on the bus that you would sort of transport the passengers around then? That's very cool if that is the case. So is this... So it looks like where that bus is, that's actually the end of the, uh, the runway there. So we'll just taxi over to that. Like I say, well then we'll probably very much annoy. And there's one of the little, it's like the baggage carrier vehicles, is it? I'm just gonna clip through that, wonderful.
Make sure that guy's not moving so we don't annoy him too much. Probably put our flaps down. Which one? Oh, it's just my flaps. Which was my flaps? Wasn't looking, I was looking at my controls. Ah, I'm not even on the runway. <laughs> I'm not even on the runway. Everything's fine. Don't look at me, other player. Don't look at me, it's embarrassing. And we are off. Look at that, a bit cloudy over Exeter, isn't it? So let's get our flaps back up then. I'm pretty sure we can't take our gear in, can we? No, by the look of it, that is not going to be an option. That's fine, though. And now we need to find Exeter. Which I believe is to the west. So I need to turn around 180 degrees. I'm going to leave it on the live weather for the now. For the now? For now. It is a bit cloudy, but at least... Yeah, that's Exeter over there. Look, there it is. The guy's still there. I'm wondering now whether that is a computer player or if it's a, one of the live traffic plane so maybe there's just a plane in Exeter waiting to taxi onto the runway I don't know how detailed it is so we are full throttle this is about as fast as this plane goes I'm afraid it's not the fastest plane we are going up a little bit though we are increasing our altitude it's fairly simple inside isn't it it's not all that much to it I guess it's a nice little starter plane isn't it I did, I think, set up all of the um, yeah, all the translation things in the plane, so, that, so I can move around inside the inside the cockpit now, which is lovely. Oh, and I can do that, which is weird. <laughs> Let's just reset that view, shall we? So this is Exeter. This looks like an industrial estate over here. Now then, will I? The only thing I really know in Exeter at all is the train station. and the university. Now, I don't think I'm going to have much of a chance of finding either of those. I have been to other things in Exeter. So I went to a training centre, which was just off the A38 or the motorway somewhere, because the motorway starts at Exeter, so it might be classed as the motorway, which could be in this industrial estate here. It was in something like this. So maybe we'll just swing over the left here and then we'll come back around on the other side. So like I say, I can't really give you much of a uh, good tour of Exeter, but for the, the people that requested to see Exeter, I'm sure they'll be seeing things, noticing landmarks a little better than I can. I'll put the view down a bit more so we can actually see. Oh, we really need to put the nose down because our vertical speed is way up. It's a little bit more difficult to tell when you're facing like this, isn't it? So I'm just trying to put that road that's on our left there. Is that the A38? Or is that or the M5? Whatever it happens to be at that point. Or is it something different? It looks like it might be something a bit different based on that weird little loop thing that's got going on there. A little rather interesting circle of houses just over here. Look in this little brick red colour. Just in front of my nose now, look. Looks like a water processing plant just on the other side of the river there, which is the River X, I would assume. Beautiful bit of sunlight just over there in the distance, look. Then we have a few suburbs. Oh, there is a cathedral in Exeter, isn't there? Of course there is. I wonder if we were to find Exeter Cathedral. I wonder if it would actually even look like a cathedral. Um, if you've not been keeping up with much of the news of this at all, there's a little bit of disappointment from UK fans on how little of the UK has had any sort of manual intervention, which is fine. It's what they, they said was going to be the, the case. Um, but I'm sure you all saw the, the, <laughs> the Buckingham Palace model. So in London they did... Oh, hitting some cloud cover. Look, look at that. In London, they've done the Millennium Dome, they've done the Houses of Parliament, they've done a few other things. Tower Bridge has all been done beautifully. Um, Buckingham Palace, they didn't do. It was just a block of flats. Just the block of flats. So this must be the city centre here. 
this sort of strip going along here where that lorry's just going, I'm pretty sure, is going to be the city centre. Now, the cathedral isn't far from... Let's just actually live pause it a second. The cathedral isn't far from the city centre. I'm wondering if the cathedral is... See those... I can't really get very... Oh, there we go. See just where my nose is there, or that my, my front wheel is. I'm wondering if that's the cathedral. It is isn't like a little green space. We do have some sort of football ground over there. Maybe if I go to my laptop and we zoom in on Exeter. Let's turn the satellite on. Obviously, I'm using Google Maps, not Bing. Other map products are available. And then we try and figure out where I am. Where would the city centre be on an actual map of Exeter? <laughs> it's going to be, yeah, so it's there. So there's Exeter Cathedral. And then I'm looking for like a sports ground. And I can't see one. But it should be if we find the River X again. Yeah, so there's a particularly wibbly part of the River X. So I think that is supposed to be Exeter Cathedral there. I'm, I'm relatively sure that's supposed to be Exeter Cathedral. Obviously not being rendered particularly well, but as I said, that was largely expected based on the other areas of the UK. Like I saw even the Lighthouse in Plymouth, which I did incorrectly name as uh, Eddystone rather than Smeaton. It is Smeaton Lighthouse, not Eddystone Lighthouse. Uh, it used to be Eddystone, but then that has moved to the breakwater. So a few people have pointed out that I'm an absolute clown. <laughs> I got the name completely wrong. So thank you to you. You guys are pointing that out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that's, that's, the, ooh, probably get a little bit of speed up, shall we? That's the cathedral. Whew. So let's continue our flight over the cathedral then, and we'll go over this direction somewhere. That looks like it's the train line underneath us, actually, doesn't it? But I can't see, I can't necessarily see where the, um, station would be. That's the word I was looking for, the station would be. So we'll just do a little bit of a, we'll sort of go across, <clears throat> excuse me, go across over here a bit and then we'll circle back to the other side of the X and look at that stuff over there. We might, might just actually reset my view to take the zoom off because the zoom does seem to do a little bit of weird warping along the, uh, along the edge of the screen, doesn't it? We'll set our head in, that's fine. Yep. I did that, thank you. So is that the train line then? Maybe that's the train line. That looks a little bit more like a train line down there, doesn't it? Yes, and that's the station look. So there's the station, which means I believe these buildings just around my left wingtip, I believe are Exeter University. That's what those will be, I believe. I'm not 100%. I'm pretty sure if you leave the station and sort of head up that hill, that's where it is. Now, I'm doing that thing again where I'm trying to do some sort of trim adjustment so I don't have to constantly hold the stick. And as always... In my experience, trim adjustment is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> and then we need to figure out how we get from here. Let me zoom out my Google Maps. Yeah, so if we... Go across this little part of Exeter over here. So I'm now heading south, south, southeast, I would say. These last few industrial estates. That must be the A38 on my right there. Which looks, or the A30 perhaps. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the X to the coast. 
and then we're going to swing right when we hit the coast because that'll take us down to Exmouth which is obviously on the mouth of the X as it enters the uh, the English Channel and then that little bit of coast between Exmouth and Torbay was Torbay well, yeah no, that's right that sounded weird when I said it in my head but that's correct that's where we'll find uh, Dawlish and Tynmouth and all these beautiful little coastal areas of, uh, of, uh, of Devon Look at that cloud cover. I really, one of the things I haven't done yet, and I'm very excited about doing. Oh, look at that little estate sort of thing just to our right wing tip there. Looks kind of cool, doesn't it? I did that. Thank you. Go away. I wonder what that building is. Doesn't look close enough to be any sort of government or. Uh, civil service sort of thing, you thought that'd be more central, wouldn't you? Getting very foggy as we head towards the coast. I'm going to leave it on foggy for the moment. We'll see what we can see when we get a bit closer. But I kind of like it. I kind of like it sounds atmospheric. Yeah, one of the things I haven't done yet, I started talking, was getting to a bigger plane go somewhere where there is some cloud cover, potentially even some rain. I don't think we've flown in rain yet. And then um, break the cloud cover. I want to break the cloud cover. That's one of the, the funnest things when you are in a... That's fine. When you are in a, a, an airplane flight, I find, is when it just breaks the cloud cover and it goes from being like a dull, grey, wild, lifeless. And then suddenly there's this explosion of colour on the lights all over the top of the clouds and it just looks amazing. Don't know this little plane is the sort of plane that we need to do that, so we probably won't worry about that today. So Exmouth is just going to be on our left there, just on the left of our, our left wing tip. It sits on the, what would that be, the east side of the uh, X pretty much. And then as we get down, we probably are going to have to... Unless it's just my altitude, if we go down a bit, will we clear this uh, cloud that's obscure in our view? It looks like it will. Yeah, I think we just, we just clipped the cloud cover, didn't we? Yeah, you can see it now. Look how beautiful. How beautiful are those little sunspots, those little sun patches on the land around us look. Amazing. Yes, that's Exmouth over there, but we're going to skim Exmouth and we're going to head straight for that sand spit. It's coming across the mouth of the X. And then we'll have Dawlish and the other sort of areas. I don't know what the rest of these little towns are that we're going over at the moment. There's nothing on the map for this one. Maybe that's just part of Exmouth there. Not too sure. Trying to keep underneath the cloud cover. <laughs> Obviously my trim has not been particularly successful so far. You can see waves coming across underneath us, look. You can see waves coming into the uh, the shore. How cool is that? So this here... Oh, there's a windmill. Awesome. This would be Dawlish one. So this is a very, very traditional seaside town. Not quite the arcades and piers tourist town, but a bit more quaint and, and Devonish, I guess. You can see the beach there with its um, erosion defences on that sand spit where it's got the uh, bars going down. And there is that, I believe, will be the train line, our, our wings just going over, the railway line. Uh, the railway line from Devon up to the rest of the world does come across this piece of coast, and it is a stunningly beautiful piece of coast to have a train ride along. Uh, if it's windy, then you get the waves essentially crashing up over the train. Do you remember the big floods we had a few years back? One of the things that happened was the train line actually collapsed on the coast because it got battered that hard by the sea. So that's fun. But yeah, when on a nice, beautiful day, you just go along the coast and it's, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. It really does. Let's pop our view down a little bit. So our Tynmouth friend, because that's what we're actually going to see, Tynmouth. 
and see it. So this would be Dawlish here, which is slightly different to Dawlish Warren. Obviously, you can tell by the incredibly different name systems, name systems they have. So I've got no idea what any of this is. All I know is I was once on a train uh, with a few friends going to Plymouth, and we got stopped in Dawlish because there was a suspicious package found on the front doorstep of a, of a local bank. And because uh, the bank was so close to the train line, they had to they had to stop the train. And my immediate thought was just, if you're a, a, some sort of terrorist or, you know, a bank robber, you're probably not going to pick Dawlish, are you? You're probably going to set your sights a bit higher. So we can see little bits of the coast there looking absolutely gorgeous. And then this here, I believe, where we have this other river, which I have no idea what it is. This will be Tynmouth. And looking at the map, the other side of the river is Sheldon. So this is Tynmouth here we're about to go over. Sheldon's the other side of that river. And if you follow that river, it would take us to Newton Abbott. So let's do a little flyover of Tynmouth then. We'll get a little lower. With a very industrial looking area on the, in fact, we're gonna go straight across to the mouth of this river. Take a closer look at this industrial area over here. And you can just see that sort of natural harbor, that C-shaped harbor in the distance there, which is where um, the Tor Bay was, Torquay and Paynton. Ah, so that looks a bit touristy, doesn't it? It looks like there's a pier there, there's the beach. So I think rather than industrial, that's probably a bit more of your standard sort of tourist location. I don't know if I've ever been to Timoth. I assume I have at some point in my life, but... Couldn't say that I have any memory of going to Timoth. So there we go, that's Timoth. So that's Sheldon on our other way, on our left. Which is quite small and quaint, and I imagine it's just really classed as a piece of Timoth, right? I'm sure everyone from Timoth and Sheldon uh, hates that, but I imagine that's how it goes. And then again, I've got no idea what this little bit up here is. And then a little bit further in the distance there, as I say, that'll be uh, Newton Abbott, which is a market town. I believe it's a market town. So we'll do, maybe we'll do a little low fly skimming of this, and then we'll try and land on some beautiful piece of Devonshire farmland. And Devonshire is one of those one of those words that, as someone from the southwest, I find it absolutely impossible to say without sounding like I'm a farmer. It's very Devonshire around here, isn't it? Impossible, impossible. So, anything to see here? Oh, a little green office block. Quite a green place, actually, isn't it? Lots of trees. Now, obviously, the trees probably aren't 100% accurate, but I assume that they are. Wherever they detect green, they they give a chance of putting trees in. And what looks like a little holiday park here, is it? Oh, I'd assume that's some form of holiday park. Yes, they've got little chalets on them. Not on all of the plots, just some of them. Only some of them. So, right. We're just going to go straight for a land. We're going to put our flaps down to max. We've taken the throttle off completely. We'll try and get over this tree line here. And then land on that field the other side of it. I don't know what we're going to be... What it is that's just... In that little sort of pale earth coloured bit just there. Ooh, we might not make it over the trees. Speed's dropping fast. Still some more trees to try and avoid. Speed's going up because I uh, dipped the nose a bit. Ah, I was going to try and get past this so we could see. Oh, no, we didn't clip the trees. Looks like it's a little uh, speedway or something, doesn't it? Like a little little dirt track, little race track, perhaps? Awesome. Well, there we go. That was Exeter, Exmouth, Dawlish, Tynmouth, all sorts of places we saw then. Um, so it's just Plymouth for us to go and have a look at again, isn't it? Let me just check to make sure I haven't... Yeah, so let's come out of this. We'll load up and I'll see you in Plymouth. Well, Plymouth is looking particularly marky today, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> I'm just going to hit the auto start. Take our brake off. Ah, that's the one thing I wanted to do. I just wanted to check my 
pedals. So it does seem to always tend in a, in a direction. So I want to make sure that it's actually... Yeah, it seems okay. If we go into the sensitivity and have a look at the... I might just increase the dead zone a little bit. Just knock it up maybe to 8% or something. Yeah, let's try that. Done. I'm, I'm, I'm at a very slight angle on the on the pedals for some reason. Might be something to do with that. Right. Apply and save. Go back. And resume. Do I actually have to bring up the ATC menu to get that to uh, go away? Yes. We have a taxiway. Ooh. What happened there? Don't know. I don't. I might be a little bit stuck. Oh, but I do have that uh, slew mode that I mentioned, didn't I? So we'll just pop ourselves down here on the runway, quite helpfully. And we might have to change the weather for Plymouth, as it is so dull and miserable. See, now it is tending to go the other direction. I wonder if it is just wind, but you wouldn't have thought wind would have that much of an impact on taxiing, but maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Didn't even put our flaps down, did we? Yeah, look at that. It's super murky. Super murky. It's going to pop this and then pop it onto the other screen so it's out of the way. So we shall head... Have a look. We shall roughly head towards the sort of town, cent town center again. That might be the hospital I'm just flying over there. Yeah, I think it must be. This big building here must be the hospital I'm just going over. Okay, so we'll roughly head towards the town center again, and then from there we'll swing over and we'll have a look at some of the suburb areas. Whilst the plane is making this little journey, let's pop into the weather and we'll say scattered clouds beautiful, yes please now we can actually see stuff so our plane is definitely pointing too far to the west we don't want to go to, to filthy Cornwall not quite yet, Cornwall isn't filthy I'm so sorry to all Cornish people <laughs> Um, it's just occurred to me that I cannot see the Tamar Bridge. Oh, that must be, I think it must be just, just gone past it over there, yeah. Because then that'll be a little sort of spit where just, our wings just coming across now, I think will be Torquay in that sort of area. So what we're actually going to fly over and look at is everything the other side of this river. So everything that's sort of directly to the left of my left wing there. That's roughly where we're going to be aiming for. So this is, yeah, there's the train station. So we're going over the uh, university campus pretty much about now-ish. There's the mall. There's the Barbican. So if we swing over to the left around here, yes, this little bridge over here is Lara Bridge. And that takes us into, and I do get these confused, so I'm going to make some people angry if I get it wrong, including my wife. Uh, this will be Plimstock, I think. Yes, pretty sure that's correct. So what we'll do is we'll swing over right to the edge of Plimstock, which is, in fact, yeah, no, we will. We will. So we'll go over to the pier over here. There is a breakwater. I mentioned that the lighthouse on Plymouth Hoe is, is actually called Smeaton, and the, the Eddie Stone, the old lighthouse, is on a breakwater. The breakwater isn't isn't mapped. There's that sort of dark patch of land just to the left of my wing there. I think that's where the breakwater would be. That's all that's detected though. And this is the sort of the closer breakwater, the Mount Batten breakwater, where there is a lovely pub. Which looks nothing like the tower blocks that this is uh, insinuating <laughs> exist there. So again, I'm not sure who was requested to see a bit more of Plymouth. 
But here you are, and this is Plimstock, maybe? So we'll do a little bit of a flyover of Plimstock. Hopefully you can see some things that you recognise. Some road layouts that uh, make sense. And as I said, we'll then swing out and we'll take a look at Plimpton. Which is another one of the suburbs of uh, of Plymouth. Which is basically the same as Plymstock. They may as well just merge them into one and just call it Plym. This is the suburb Plym. <laughs> I'm only saying that to annoy people who live in these areas. It's like a rivalry between the two. But now I have to try and figure out where Plymstock would actually be. That's interesting. Where would Plymstock actually... Uh, Plym tons. <laughs> I genuinely did it. Where would Plimpton actually be? I think it's, the, it's definitely the other side of the river. So all of this is Plim Stop. This road here, I think, leads up towards sort of Alberton sort of way. I'm guessing that's where we are. I have completely lost track of where we are. So over to the left. So maybe that patch over there. It looks too far away. I don't know what that uh, quarry looking area is. I'm not sure what that is. It's too far away to be the landfill. So I'm trying to figure out where Sherford would be, which as I say is the new housing estate that's being built. It kind of bridges, bridges Plymouthstock and Plimpton almost. Ah, so yeah, that, I think. We are just now going over Elberton Roundabout. I think that looks like pretty much where that should be. So if we head left from there. So I think maybe this bit here that we're just clipping. I think this is Sherford. This is the new area. Which does have the sort of the red brick buildings I mentioned. It doesn't look very big there. Like I say, it ha I don't know when the satellite imagery was taken. But I'm guessing the reason some of the houses haven't been detected is because maybe they were being built and it couldn't detect the height on it or maybe something like that. So I'm pretty sure we just flew over Sherford, which looks a lot smaller than I think it actually is now. Which means there is the A38. Which means this all over here, I believe, would be Plimpton. I love having traffic in the game. I think it, it just makes it's just a small little detail. But it just makes such a massive bit of difference when you're actually flying low like this. So Plimpton, I know a little bit. I had a job in Plimpton in a school when I was uh, in university. I know it a little bit, but still not a huge amount. All the industrial area over there. And I don't know if I'll be able to find where I worked, because it was um, it's in a very old part of Plimpton, down in an area called St. Morris. It's like hundreds of years old sort of uh, buildings and roads. It's tiny, piddly, piddly, tiny roads. But I don't know how we would go about finding it now, because I don't think I know enough of the rest of Plimpton. Plimpton's actually huge, isn't it? Look, flying over like this. It's absolutely massive. I'm pretty sure this is all Plimpton. And this little strip of sort of office -y buildings, I think, going underneath us now, I think that's where the old bowling alley and the such like used to be. So we are getting to the outskirts of it. Yeah, because there's the, there's the A38. That means that up here, there is a national park called, oh, what's it called? Sher no, not Sherford. Yeah, that, that, these two office blocks here, this would be the national park, which are completely for Salcom. Salcom? I think it's Salcom. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the car park there. Okay, so we've got a little bit of an idea of where we are. So I might just do one little swing around. 
That road there is called the Embankment. That goes along the side of the river there. Don't know what's going on with that. I don't know what that is. Is that a thing? I don't know. That's a, a super... That's Sainsbury's. And that's Marshmills Roundabout with the A38 there. So this is the road that heads back into Plimpton. So if we follow this road... It should come up to a little roundabout at some point. will be just here where my left wheel is and if you follow the road to the right so sort of directly underneath where my plane model is at the moment that's the sort of the shopping area of Plimpton the main shopping district and if you go up here take this road down here and this is sort of St. Morris now so yeah it doesn't look doesn't look quite right because the buildings are all relatively new looking buildings and the roads are actually a bit wider than I think they would be assuming I am in the right place of course so I think that building just to the left of my plane body I think that is the school I worked at I think it must be and there is a, a stately house over in this direction as well it's called Elizabeth's house I think but that will probably just be detected as an office block so I'm not even sure how I'd go about finding it now but there we go then that is a little extended tour of the suburbs of Plymouth and obviously we've got a little bit of a look at Tinmouth and Dawlish and Exeter as well. So there you are. I hope you've enjoyed this latest look at the viewer requests. As always, if you have any requests, anything you'd like to see, do let me know down in the comments. As I said earlier on, I will try and look at every single thing and people request to see. So if you do have anything you want to see, do let me know and I'll try and get around to it. It may just, as I said before, be a little bit staggered depending on if there's things I can group together or not. No idea what that building is. That's the A38 again. That must have been mis... misgenerated, I suppose, is the word we'd use. There's some, there is something there, because you can see the road going into it. But I'm pretty sure there's nothing quite like that. Although I don't know what that is. I can't think of any building that you'd go past in the A38 there. Anyway, yeah, a little bit of a look at the uh, outskirts of Plimpton as we fly over here, look. And again, just look at that view distance. Which way are we pointing? We're pointing directly north. So we're looking up towards sort of mid... Wood, uh, not towards Dartmoor, I guess, pretty much. Which is why it looks a bit hilly and... Slightly different colour to what you might expect from farmland. But all that sun streaming through the clouds. The cloud cover coming over. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Well, as I said, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, do hit the like button. That'd be massively appreciated. Comment, subscribe, all those good things. I will hopefully see you next time in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I hope you're enjoying this series half as much as I'm enjoying playing it. And as always, thank you very much for joining me.